Welcome everybody from Filippo Bartolotta, you are on Italy Winelands. This is an episode where we'll be talking about a very famous wine. Actually, there's a question for you. What is the most sold Italian wine in the world? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Lambrusco, that's the answer. Can you believe it? What is Lambrusco? For most people, Lambrusco is a cheap and nasty sweet dessert sparkling wine. Wrong. This has been sold a lot of cheap and nasty Lambrusco. A lot of cheap and nasty Lambrusco was sold in the past, above all, like uh, in Italy and uh, abroad. But today there's lots of winemakers that actually are making a point about producing Lambrusco that is high quality wine. What makes a sparkling wine of high quality? Well, first of all, is how much grape do you take home? It depends really on the quantities. About Labrusco, what you want to know is where is really from? If I say Ferrari, well, if I say Ferrari, where is it from? It's from Modena. It's, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever been there, guys, but this is an area that is called the Food Valley of Italy. Why? Because Parmigiano Reggiano. Prosciutto di Parma, tagliatelle, you know, some of the greatest food ever. Oh, I was almost forgetting aceto balsamico. Where is it? Modena. I was almost forgetting how some of the world craziest food products were invented in this area. This is the area about slow food and fast cars. Duca e as they say, Ducati was born in this area. You say, like, you haven't talked about the wine yet. Of course not. I want to take you there. So, about Lambrusco, you have the Lambrusco DOP appellation, uh, which is like the overall appellation with a lot of different stuff from the broad province of uh, Modena is about. And then you have three kind of specific Lambrusco, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. So, let's begin. Stay with me. Lambrusco numero uno, not numero uno because it's number one, but it's like uh, the first style. Lambrusco di Sorbara. Not too easy to pronounce, Sorbara. What is it? It's actually a variety of Lambrusco. You know how uh, around the uh, 1900, there used to be like 47 different kind of like uh, varieties of Lambrusco out there. Now there is more or less eight. Lambrusco di Sorbara, <laughs> even myself, I just got confused. Lambrusco di Sorbara is known for being like the lightest, the most acidic. Usually it's like the pink froth, lots of violets, very sapid, almost salty. This is a kind of wine that is wonderful if you want to do something crazy, but really, that really works and you're going to be having everybody that's going to be gobsmacking, is to get Lambrusco di Sorbara with oysters. Did I say it right? Wasn't it just oyster and champagne? Forget about it! Just oysters and Lambrusco di Sorbara and you'll be the new gourmet king of your company. Lambrusco Grasparossa di Castelvetro. Now, if you haven't uh, signed up to my, subscribe to my YouTube channel, do it now, put your comments down, and I would like to have actually a audio comment if you can say Lambrusco di Grasparossa di Castelvetro. What is it? This is like the red, more red looking. Grasparossa means the red stalk. Graspa rossa, a stalk red, because when you look at the um, grapes, you will see how Graspa rossa has got like a really red stalks. It's really beautiful to look at. And the color, by the way, is more on the red ruby kind of color. How is it different from Sorbara uh, that we talked before? It's a little bit deeper in color. It comes also from a higher, usually on the hills. Where the Sobara was about the Secchia and Panaro River, where, by the way, I used to do wild water canoeing, beautiful rivers. In this case, we are closer to the Appennino, the mountains. Appennino is the backbone of Italy. It's like the, the, the backbone of mountains that go from the top all the way down to the peak of the boot. So as a result, you'll find the wines a little bit more mountainy, quite refreshing, quite zesty, with a peach and an almond finish. Third kind of Lambrusco di Modena is Lambrusco Salamino. For those that know a little bit of Italian, Salamino, what is uh, salami? It's a kind of charcuterie. 
But uh, Lambrusco Salamino is known for being like maybe the darkest of them all, like a deep blue or like a purple, purple rain, purple rain. So it's the deepest kind of Lambrusco. The blue hues of the froth makes it really unique. And um, what else? This is a kind of wine that is usually drunk is on, on the Carpi area. And in this, in this area, people tend to have this Lambrusco mostly with uh, pork. You'll be surprised. Man, you know, like uh, pork and Lambrusco is just like, and salami in general, all, all those kind of like charcuterie, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a match made in heaven. So, my friends, as you've understood by now, there, is, there isn't just one Lambrusco. There is four different types of Lambruscos, as we said. Um, but in general terms, is a sparkling, is a red sparkling. Sorbara tends to be a little bit lighter. looks almost like a, like a blush, like a rosé kind of sparkling. Uh, and you can go from the super dry versions to some of the residual sugar, sweeter versions. And so they can even go with the, the pastries, like local pastries of Modena. Um, for what we know, though, Lambrusco, something that I haven't said, is that a really, really, really ancient variety. As a matter of fact, the Romans, you know, like Pliny the Eldest and Cato, used to talk about Lamb Vitis Labrusca, Vitis Labrusca, to describe the wild Vitis vinifera, so the wild vines that were usually cultivated at the edges of the field. So it's a really really ancient like maybe over 2000 years old vine which doesn't happen very often one last thing that is very important to know when it comes to lambrusco is that roughly there is 8000 hectares altogether and this is the land where cooperation so cooperatives were basically born you know like we are uh, between uh, to get from Florence, for instance, towards Modena is going to be one and a half hours drive. You have to cross the Apennines from Milano. Is the same. Roughly, you have an hour and something drive. Just to put you in the picture, the center of Italy, one of those places where people, people in this area, just love life. They love eating. They love hanging together. And Lambrusco is maybe one of the most, one of the jolliest wine to crack it open with the simplest food. Can you imagine? I was almost forgetting the most important thing, at least for me. This is the area where also Mortadella was born. Now, have you ever tried Mortadella? If you have not tried Mortadella, you might want to give it a shot now. And you remember me. You just get a, a piece, couple of slices of bread. You get this Mortadella. You just put it in the middle, nothing else. Give it a bite. Have some Lambrusco and life. It's going to be much sweeter to you and everyone else. Well, thank you very much for listening, guys. Uh, tuning in with me is awesome. I love to tune in with you. Write down your comments. Subscribe to my channel. Check me out on all the different you, uh, social media channels. What, you, what haven't I done? Voila. Now, if you manage to tell me whether this was one of the four wines that I mentioned, which one is this? If you find the right solution, I'll shoot a bottle over to your home. Salute. Meow.